Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm answering someone's question. They wrote to me asking me how they could create a fan sort of pattern in Illustrator. Now, I've done one here on YouTube that is a more geometric one. This one is actually a curved one. So let's see how I solved the problem because it wasn't what we thought it would be. We thought the solution would be a blend tool, but that's not the way it worked out. The blend tool just didn't give me the results that I wanted. So I'm starting here with a straight line. I drew it holding down the shift key as I did, just using the line tool. My document is 1920 by 1080, that's just screen size, but you could make your document any size that you like. With this line selected, I'm going to repeat it. So I'm going to choose Effect, Distort and Transform and then Transform. I'll turn Preview on. I'm going to select to make 13 copies because I want 14 shapes in total. And now I'm just going to increase the horizontal movement to get some space between these objects. And I'm thinking that something that is almost square in shape, perhaps a little bit longer than it is wide. So you can see that the final result is just a little bit longer than it is wide. I'll click OK. At this point, we'll choose Object and Expand Appearance because we want to get the lines out. Here in the Layers palette, I have a group that is just a series of lines. So we're going to choose Object Ungroup and do that repeatedly until Ungroup is no longer an option. So we have a set of lines. At this point, we're going to choose Object, Envelope Distort, Make with Warp. Now, there are a whole series of warps here that you can use and Somewhat surprisingly, the one that I found worked best was Squeeze. So we're going to apply a squeeze and we're going to do it at 100%. It's these curves that we're looking for. So I'll click OK. To break these lines now out of that object, we'll choose Object Expand. We only want to expand the object, not the fills at this stage. I'll click OK. If we wanted to, we could apply that squeeze a second time just to bend these a little bit more. Object, Envelope, Distort, Make with Warp. Now this is obviously far too high a percentage, but we could wind it back if we want to do just a little bit more of a squeeze. So I'm looking at this curve in here now and I'm thinking that I might even want to take it up around the 50% mark here. This looks pretty good to me. I'll click OK. And again, we'll choose Object and Expand. We want to expand the object, not the fill at this stage. Click OK. So let's see what we've got in the Layers palette. Well, we've got a whole series of paths inside a set of groups. So let's break them out of the groups with Object Ungroup and do that until Ungroup is no longer an option. So we just have a series of paths. Now I made 13 copies plus my original, so I have 14 of these shapes. I want to select just seven of them. I want to select the seven on this side of the group. So this is this seven here. And what I want to do is line them all up so that their right hand sides are all in alignment. So I'll just click here. Well, they shot all the way to the end of the artboard. So I'll just bring them back. I want to keep them horizontally aligned, but I do want them to be just in this position here. Let's select the other ones. Let's go to the align panel because I must have Align to Artboard selected, which I do. I just want Align to Selection. And again, I'm going to align the left-hand side of all of these shapes together. Now we'll put them together. So I'll take one set and just move them across. I'm going to zoom in because I want these to be nicely overlapped. So I'm going to make sure that they are overlapped as much as they can be. So that's a good overlap. I'm seeing they get thicker every time I move away from that position. So this must be as good an overlap as I'm going to get. I'll press Control or Command Zero so I can zoom back out. Now I'll select over all of these shapes and I'm going to start bringing them down in size. So I just want them to be a bit more rounded. I'm not going to hold the Shift key because I don't want to adjust the width of them. I just want to adjust the height. I'm going to draw out an ellipse, the ellipse that I'm going to use as my pattern. I'm holding the shift key so it is a circle. I'm going to fill it with a color so it's easier to see. 
So I'll just fill it with a sort of pink color. I'll move it to the back with object arrange send to back and I'm just going to move it into position and resize it holding the shift and the alt keys as I resize it. So basically what is inside the circle at the moment is what's going to be my pattern piece. So let's just zoom in a bit closer and make sure that we're going to get this nice and even. I'll select over all of the lines but not the circle. I'm going to choose object group just so that they're in a group so that now when I center everything they're going to be centered relative to each other. And let me just position this circle a little bit better. I think it just needs to be a smidgen smaller. Okay, things are looking pretty good right now. I've got my circle. I actually am going to need a second copy of it because we're going to lose one copy as we work. So I'm going to drag the circle onto the new icon, lock it down and turn it off so that we only have one circle there visible. Now in our group we have a series of paths. So I'm going to reselect my group. I'm going to choose object ungroup and then I'm going to turn all these paths into objects. So at the moment they're lines with strokes. What we want them to be is to be shapes. But before we do that we need to see if we want to increase the stroke width because this is the last time we're going to get a chance to do it. I'm feeling pretty happy with three pixels, but you could adjust yours if you wanted to. We'll choose Object Expand and we want to expand the stroke here, but we don't want to expand the fill because there is no fill. So we'll just select Stroke and click OK. So now let's choose Object Ungroup because everything appeared inside groups. So now we have filled paths rather than stroked paths. At this point we can put all of these in a group, so I'll choose Object Group. Now I have this circle and I have my group and I want to use this to cut everything. So I'm going to drag the ellipse on top of the group, select both of them and I'll go to the Pathfinder palette and click Crop. And that cuts away everything I don't want, leaving behind only the bits that I do want. So I've got my ellipse here now, I've just made it visible. I'm going to increase the stroke weight on it so I get a sort of heavier edge. If I want to make adjustments to the color fill, I can do that as well right now. I'm going to choose a sort of lighter color. So this is going to be the pattern piece. So I'm going to select it and choose Object Pattern, Make, click OK. I'm going to choose Brick by Row so that these shapes are offset from each other. I'm going to make sure that the width and height proportions are not linked. You don't want it to be linked, you want it to be unlinked. And I'm going to start reducing the height. So obviously right now the shapes are not layered correctly because I'm not seeing the fan shape. I need to click here to bring the fan to the front. And now I can just fine tune the height of this pattern. Click in the height here and just fine tune the value I use. Now I've got a bit of a gap in here. I'm going to close up the width gap as well. So if I'm happy with the result I'll just click Done. I'll select and move my pattern piece out of the way. I don't need it to be on the artboard right now. I'll make a rectangle the size of the artboard and this time I do want to align it to the artboard so I'll go to the Align panel, click Align to Artboard and align it to the artboard. The fill is targeted here so we'll go to the Swatches panel. Here is our pattern. I'll just click once to apply the pattern to the rectangle. At this point if you think that your pattern piece needs alteration you can do so. Just double click on the pattern and it opens it back up again. I think the height is a bit small so I'm going to bring that up and I think I'm also going to close up the width a little bit. When I'm done I'll click done and the new pattern will be applied to my filled rectangle. 
depending on the spacing between the lines and the warp that you apply, you can get different effects through this fan shape. So you may want to experiment with spacing and with the warp to get the desired spacing between the objects in your fan. I've had ones where things have been a lot more even. In this one, there's a bigger spacing on the outside elements and a tighter spacing in the middle. And it's really up to you as to what effect you want. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope that you've learned things about Illustrator of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, click to subscribe, click the notifications bell, and we'll let you know when new videos are released. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.